So let's understand, guys, a little bit on the structure of how ISO 42001 looks like. And then, you know, you see a couple of clauses here. So let's discuss uh, on the same. <clears throat> now, the first thing what we always have to keep in mind is to define the scope of AI systems, right? Now, AI is definitely in, in demand, like a lot of organizations and companies, you must be seeing that they do want AI systems and they do want uh, AI processes to be incorporated or they have existing systems and they want to integrate with some of the AI tools, right? N number of possibilities across. Now, usually the best way one can define a scope within AI is mainly to understand their ongoing issues that they have in the company. So let's say for instance, right now, uh, organizations may be using you know like a, a data protection and a grc tool within themselves and then within that tool you know people have to go ahead and create certain risk or people have to create certain policies right uh, definitely nobody gets a handwritten policy on its own nobody gets like a by default policy on its own it it's all made somewhere now the expectation is such that according to the best practices of the company AI is expected to give you certain suggestions. Like if I am a policy owner or if I'm a policy creator, then rather than myself drafting a policy statement or a policy scope, I want AI to give me a good suggestion or give me a couple of suggestions out of which I can just derive a few and write my policy. So that way my things will become more easy or I may get an overview about that, okay, the AI policies which the other organizations or the other companies have created has written scope and statement keeping a particular context in mind, okay? So the scope of an AI system will have to be defined exactly on things that we would like to automate more or make things more uh, streamlined or ensure that certain issues which I am facing with maybe some manual effort or with manual operations can be given to an automated system and they can resolve it. So a combination of that will define the scope of AI systems for any organization, guys. Okay, so the scope of AI system is widely open from a company to company. Okay, we are not making it like a very generalized AI system, but definitely depending on the size of the company, the geography, the location, their budget, you know, their uh, technical ability, what company has got within themselves, a lot many factors would play an important role to define the scope. So some of the examples, if you can see, um some of the widely used examples are chatbots probably all of us must have heard about chatbots that is again an example of an ai system uh image recognition systems mostly or face scanner or you know like, like your biometric or so forth predictive analysis tool that we mainly do for statistical analysis for checking out some of the kpis or kris or preparing like a predictive model of how let's say next financial year or next financial statement of a company is going to look like or how the growth and revenue is going to look like right you have n number of use cases on predictive analysis same similarly you may have uh, if i talk about manufacturing segment or if i talk about industrial segment then you can have robots as as uh, one of the widely used use case of ai systems or so forth but we need to keep in mind that what exactly is the scope that our organization needs for so defining a scope becomes really important guys as a structure from an iso 42001 perspective all right and then you can definitely take some of the references okay some of the references that you may need uh, for an ai system um you may take some of the use cases if you know that if a company is using you may take certain tools you may take certain uh, processes which can automate AI or you may take some of the external references or external consulting which is going to help you to automate or incorporate AI systems or so. So references is acceptable that based on certain references, based on certain, uh, you know, consultation, you can define the scope as well, guys. And then here it is very important to define some of the core definitions within the AI segment. Okay. So, uh, we won't be getting into too much details because of the limited time, but if I talk about AI, 
now understanding some of the core elements of ai even talks about human values it talks about labor practices environmental sustainability transparency accountability privacy human centered design safety and reliability right now these are all terminologies which has to be explicitly defined like just one example if i talk about human centered design right now ai system should be designed and it should complement human capabilities okay and enhance their decision making now ai systems are not here to replace a human being or an employee at a workforce completely but let's say if i'm dedicatedly performing an activity or if i'm dedicatedly performing some task in a particular way and i see that there is a scope of improvement but i don't have automation capabilities or rather i don't have a system which can you know do this activities on my behalf then the designs and the ai system should be such that that should complement the human work that should complement the human capabilities make more matured and informed decisions right maybe i can get some data a past data based on which my statements and my work capability may change maybe i can get some past results or maybe i can get some predictive results based on which my thought process may change and i can make more informed decision so terms and definitions over here are focused on all of these principles guys okay you can think of that as core elements so here it becomes very important to define principles of accountability transparency privacy safety and reliability human centric designs um community development right and a lot 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 others um you know if we were to get into much details on the same all right and then followed by definitely the context of the organization so as we as we discussed earlier that we need to define the organization that within an organization what exactly is the need and expectation of an ai system is the organization capable to handle an ai system within its current resources within its current infrastructure etc define the scope of ai system as we were just speaking earlier very correctly and ensure that you are preparing like an ai management plan okay that is something which becomes important but highlighting needs and expectations of ai as well as ensuring that we are preparing like an ai management plan that is really important and i'll show you an example in a couple of minutes that how an ai management uh, system plan looks like but that is something which we have to keep in mind from the clauses of uh, 42001 guys okay followed by the leadership aspect now leadership has one of the major roles to play in, in terms of preparing ai associated policies ai associated controls ai associated roles and responsibilities okay ensuring right resources are allocated uh, within the organization there is an employee contribution that is happening there is enough communication that is happening within the organization there is a scope of business integration with the ai systems okay so leadership has a huge role to play in this segment guys because this is again a top down approach that we need to take into consideration so we expect that the business and the leadership first understands the entire structure and then you know they take an informed decision to incorporate ai policies and you know uh, ai resources talk about ai within the organization understand the roles of several stakeholders behind this ai and make things in a well structured manner to give like a proper end to end plan of the right stakeholders who will be working on this roles and responsibilities authorities of several reporting managers and subordinates of how they are going to incorporate this ai system or so forth so the leadership has this major role to play in the ai infrastructure guys and then followed by the planning aspect guys now planning of ai it's not just only about addressing the risks and you know uh, minimizing or mitigating those risks or so forth now i have to even understand some of the ai risk criteria okay now what are some of the acceptable and non acceptable risk that ai system can generate 
Now, if I were to talk one, data privacy becomes data privacy and information security becomes one of the major concern when I talk about AI risk. Then if I think of AI systems, then I have to keep in mind that AI is going to give me a fair and a transparent output. So depending on the algorithms and depending on the patterns, right, the data patterns, because here it involves a concept of data. It involves a concept of data science, deep learning, machine learning. That's how an AI system is usually framed up. So I have to keep in mind that from a planning perspective, the risk related to data, the risk related to accepting some of the risk associated with information security or so forth, making some informed decision based on that. What happens if I get an undesirable output and it hampers the organization in a negative way, right? That the risk has increased rather than decreasing it. Or I may have promoted automation, but I have kept my information security at a risk. I have kept my data at a risk, right? So we do want to analyze the risk segment here in the planning phase from an AI perspective, guys. And then that is the main agenda over here that we try to highlight within the organization, its capabilities, its scope of improvement, what undesirable output these AI systems can get inside how we can work on its treatment, how are we going to perform some of the assessment, right? All of those segments from a risk perspective has to be taken and then that definitely we have to keep the segment as well in mind. Like healthcare system and financial system are the most exposed domains as far as AI is concerned because if something goes wrong from a healthcare perspective, that's, that's a very critical domain when I talk about AI and healthcare. Similarly for finance as well, it's a, it's a huge financial loss if, if something wrong goes with the AI system or so, correct? So these sectors also will have to be taken care in mind that AI has a huge correlation with this sectors if we try to involve and the risk pertaining to this sector is again going to be more and more and more, right? One use case if I talk about from a healthcare sector is like disease diagnostics, okay? now rather than doing a manual activity if ai systems are incorporated and they are performing the diagnostics okay and somehow the output of ai system is not that efficient right they are doing like with an accuracy of 60 percent but still 10 on i mean 4 on 10 cases are going wrong now think of the risk that is going to impose I would any day feel that, okay, if the AI system is doing the wrong analysis and is doing the right, uh, wrong diagnosis, then it is absolutely making sense for me to remove that AI system and do it in a manual way. It's just that it would take some more time, but I am at least minimizing my risk. So AI has a lot of risk opportunities and a risk expectation that could come across guys. So we, we have to keep in mind and determine an AI risk from a planning perspective uh, and ensure that we are addressing all the risk and the planning for mitigating those risks in a correct manner with with uh, appropriate understanding about the risk capacity tolerance of the company and so forth okay followed by the support segment guys now support becomes an important segment right we are expecting to have altogether a separate AI department in the organization like how we have right now from an information security perspective as a CISO or from a data protection perspective as a DPO and you know chief data protection officer or so forth. It is very likely that we may soon see a chief AI officer as well as the use and the awareness of AI becomes more and more important. At the same time onboarding the right resources capable of managing AI systems working on AI maintenance, working on AI development, ensuring that people understand the AI systems and make its effective use. Okay. That is all going to be from the support side so that we have the right resource allocation. We have the right technological resources. We have the financial resources. We have information resources, right? And they are all aligned with the risk management of the company, right? So ensuring that we get the right support, we get the right resources, and then you onboard the right AI system. So 
this is all like you know a prerequisite that one needs to go through and understand it thoroughly put it on a pen and paper prepare a proper plan and then discuss that is it really worth to bring in ai system at the moment is it really worth to bring in ai system and incorporate with an existing system or how exactly would be the best decision that i can take across so that is something guys we we definitely have to understand from org from leadership planning support operation perspective and so forth guys all right and then definitely from an operation and performance evaluation we keep improvising as usual you take up as a learning you keep improvising with time you work on more and more maturity of ai models you work on ai processes make it more mature uh, more and more education training communication right that all would play a significant role in adopting the ai system for the companies guys and then iso has typically given us a list of controls okay a list of controls specifically meant for uh, aims that you can uh, have as a part of an extra and then uh, in the next segment we are going to talk about the impact assessment a bit we are going to talk about the risk assessment a bit right so that's how the entire structure of uh, iso 42001 looks like guys all right and uh, yeah as usual as we defined or as, as we uh, spoke regarding the scope now the ai life cycle would also be from a development to testing to deployment to operation right it will follow the same life cycle as an sdlc life cycle as well the only thing that will primarily change is the use cases the amount of testing that needs to be done the amount of risk that needs to be determined right so the core concept of following sdlc or policies or controls or risk the core still remains the same but the primary focus becomes the ai systems guys okay so ai system will also be defined specifically for departments 